watching At Home with Julia. We are starting our school year in a couple days. I have a two-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter that I homeschool, even though they're technically not school age yet. We do preschool and toddler school at home. So um, seeing that we're only a couple days away from starting, I do have a plan. So I thought I would share that plan with you. Uh, now I'm going to discuss what I'm going to do with my preschooler. So my daughter is four and a half years old. Um, she's been doing preschool at home with me for uh, a couple of years now, I would say. And um, she already is in the process of learning to read. So she can do, you know, phonetic words she sounds out. Um, and she can do some of the double letter um, sounds, like, you know, the double E she recognizes pretty consistently is E. Um, uh, but we're still working on a lot of those tricky aspects of the English language when you're learning to read. So I know that's going to take a while. And that's where we are with that. Um, she also has been doing some writing. We started with cursive. Um, and we're just going to continue with cursive for right now. Um, but she's been doing a little bit of writing. Uh, mostly just tracing at this point. Um, hasn't really tried writing a lot on her own. Um, and what else? Oh, she's also started to do some math. We've been doing Montessori math. Um, we started last year with math cycle. And so, um, she already has some, uh, familiarity with numbers and counting and the decimal system and simple, um, operations, addition and subtraction. Um, so that's where our, our starting point is. She also loves to be read to. She's super creative. She loves to play. She loves to do art. So um, that's our starting point at the beginning of this year. I also just wanted to quickly mention that in my homeschool, I am inspired by Montessori. But as I've done more reading and watching and um, thinking, I'm also drawn to certain aspects of Waldorf as well as Charlotte Mason, who really didn't start until they were six. But there are a lot of elements that can um, be used in a preschool setting. Um, so while I started strongly with Montessori, now I'd say it influenced by all of those, um, philosophies. Okay. So now what are we doing this year? So for the core academics that you would think of as reading, writing, arithmetic, right? Um, uh, my four-year-old and I will be spending a, a little bit of time each day. I'm, I'm, my goal is about half an hour each day working on those core things. So the first thing we will be doing is practicing her reading. So I have some early readers. Um, these are some more Montessori series. I think I got these both from um, Montessori services online. But we've also been working through, let me get it here, <laughs> our, uh, my first reading library from Usborne Books. Yay, Usborne Books. Um, these have been great. We are on level six now. Yes. We will be starting level six. So we've done all of these. There's two each in one through five. And these ones are dual readers up through six, I believe. I think six or seven are the last ones that are dual readers. Okay, I got, I got one out. Um, for some reason, my daughter has no problem with getting them out. And sometimes they're all over the place. And me now, I'm, you know, couldn't get it out. So this is one of them just to show you. This is a level five. So we've already read this one together. Um, but it's ooh, dual reader, so the adult will read this part and the child will read this part here. Um, she loves these. Um, and uh, I've actually, because they've been getting harder, I've been in there a little longer. I've been trying to get her to mix in more of the these. These are shorter <laughs> as we go along just so she gets more practice with the simple reading. But I'm glad that she likes it and we just get a little bit of that practice in every day. Um, so that's the first part of our core time. The second part is just practicing writing. Um, I'm, I feel like it's just one of those things that you just need to practice consistently a little bit every day. So, um, we of course do this on chalkboard first. I have pink chalk for her as it's her favorite color. I usually write it in white and then let her choose a color. So we do this with letters and also, um, by the end of last year, we were starting, she was starting to trace words. So I'm going to continue with that. Um, what we'll do is we'll choose a letter, um, at the beginning of the week. Um, I might have her choose one from a bag or choose, you know, we'll see if there's one that like really sticks out of her. I'm thinking of starting with the first letter 
of her name the first week and um, we'll choose that letter. Let's just say we're doing A, right? Or A, ah, as we often call it, as we use the phonetic sounds. Um, then I'd have her write, trace that out for me several times. And then we think of words that have A ah in them. So like apple, for example, I might write out apple and have her trace that and we'll choose two or three words. And then the next day I made her this little book. Um, and I got this printable from mrprintables.com, so um, that's where that's from. Um, and I printed it out to make, they had they had this cute little idea where you had like a letter on the front and made different, several different books, like a book for each letter, but I just made it into two, I split it into two books that should cover all the letters and double letter sounds um, for us to practice. So I would, I'll write for her the letter we choose a couple times, have her trace it and I'm hoping she's interested in starting to write it herself as well. And then we'll do the same thing with two or three words. And then she can draw something related to either the letter or one of the words um, over here. So I thought that would be fun. And then we have um, we have the books at the end of the year, which is kind of cool. Yes, so those are the <laughs> everyday things that we're going to do. Then um, after that, we're going to spend a little bit of time more in depth on one thing each day. So it could be more reading. Um, I am going to be following the Ordinary Parents Guide to Teaching Reading, um, starting not from the beginning because that's not where she is, um, but I think it's, it's like section four, two constant blends. So just reviewing some of the some of the things that can be tricky and really trip um, beginner readers up. Um, and I don't know if we'll use. I, I'm, t I'm not intending to just have her read the book as it's written. Um, we'll probably use some of our Montessori materials, in particular the movable alphabet. Maybe we'll write out the words together and then read them. Um, I might write out sentence strips or words for her to read. So um, that's, yep, but that's how I'll be using that. So that would be a little bit longer. So we would do a little bit of reading, a little bit of writing, and then this, act, like one lesson from this. And that would be her focus time for one day. Another day, instead of that, we might do math. So for this year, I want to re really review um, and, and make sure she has like a concrete understanding of numbers, of linear counting, and um, moving on to the decimal system and operations again. And it's stuff we've, we have covered it all before um, in using, again, the Montessori materials. And, but I'm just going to back up and we'll move through it again. And just to make sure we're really understanding, I did bring up um, one of the Montessori materials for math to show you. But again, there's a lot and that's like probably multiple videos and you can go look online for Montessori math. For right now, I'm sure other people have shown it. But this, um, these are golden beads and these are great for an introduction to the decimal system. So you can see it's, um, tactile concrete this is one unit this is 10 units or one ten this is 10 tens or 100 and this is sideways <laughs> this is 10 uh, ten hundreds or 1000 so I mean you get between the thousand cube and the unit that difference there and then with that we also have uh, cards um, and they're all Montessori math is all color coded so units are green um, <laughs> tens are blue hundreds are red and thousands are also green so a lot of the Montessori math materials that you will get um, have that same color coding on it um, so the so we've done this before in the past and it's something I want to review with her really like matching the beads so um, I might give her 2,000 cubes and ask her to get that you know we lay all the cards out. Let, get, well, this is six. Let's say I give her six. Um, that's not thousands. That's hundred. Let's say I give her six hundreds. It's late, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, six hundreds and ask her to get the card, or I could give her the cards and say, "Can you get me this?" And I, I want her to bring me back six hundreds. So um, I'll fix that later. So that might be something we do for math um, that day, just to practice. But again, it's not going to be every day. She's four. Um, so maybe once or twice a week is my goal with that. Um, then the last option would be additional writing practice. And what I'm thinking of doing for this, again, she's very creative. And, um, this idea is inspired by Waldorf schools. This is normally something they would do more in first grade. Um, 
but is to do art based on the letter. Now, you, they would normally have a story about the letter and then um, do art around based on the story. So like for fish and then draw the F representing a fish. I've seen some beautiful drawings they've done. Um, a lot of the books that they have, they do capital print letters. And again, we're doing cursive. So I think we'll just, you know, come up, have her trace the letter and then do her own art around it. Um, if she comes up with things that are related to the sound, that would be awesome. But she has a tendency to, um, buck restrictions a little bit. So I'm just, I just want her to practice and have fun with the letters. Um, so I think I'm going to be a little bit more lenient about that. And hopefully by the end of the year, she'll have, you know, an art piece for each letter that I can then make into a little book for her that I think would be really nice for her to have. So, um, yeah, that is the core subjects of reading, writing, and math, but I don't stop there. <laughs> we have a lot of extras. So for extras, we have a lot of them. Uh, the first I'm going to mention is circle time. So I do this with both the kids. Um, it, it's part of morning time, but I'm calling it circle time in my head this year. Um, cause it's kind of based more off of Waldorfy circle time with some other stuff thrown in. So it's a lot of seasonal poems, songs, finger plays. Um, I also incorporate for, um, my son, some nursery rhymes. Um, and we usually do our month poem in there. Um, so it's pretty short. It's, it's mainly poems and songs. And then at the end we do our Italian, which is basically, um, I choose a song in Italian that we do. And occasionally we also might count up to 10 in Italian or 20, kind of just fun. And it's again, keeping it really, really short. So that's circle time, which is, I'm counting as part one of our morning time. And then part two would be some more, um, it's academic, but not, um, not the reading, writing, arithmetic, core academics, but academic um, like subjects. So the biggest one we're doing this year is geography. And we're doing an around the world study where we're gonna spend a little time, um, I don't know if studying is the right word, but exploring each continent. And this is mostly through picture books. And I have um, several books for each continent highlighting different countries. Obviously not every country in the world is highlighted, um, but here I just pulled out some of the samples of books that I got. Um, so um, some good quality picture books. This would be for the United States and North America. This is for Mexico and North America. I'm sorry for the glare. Um, Africa, I'm forgetting what country this is, um, but I really like the story. <laughs> so um, we have a bunch wrap. We're spending a little bit longer in Africa actually because my daughter is really interested in Africa, African animals, especially um, I would say the area of Kenya and Tanzania where the Maasai people live and I'm really sorry if I'm saying any of that wrong um, but she's just fascinated by it and um, we have several books already that are kind of about that area so I got some more but also I, I did try to get um, some books that were about uh, you know, the other parts of Africa as well, because it's a really big, really big continent with lots of different countries and culture and, and all that. So, um, yes, continuing on, I have for Russia, I always say this word wrong, and my sister speaks Russian. I keep asking her, so I'm sure, I'm sure I'm going to be asking you again, sweet little sister. Um, uh, this was for South America. So I, I have, again, several for each, um, each continent is a mix of ones that I've bought because I thought they were good enough that I wanted to do that. And I got a lot of them used. And then some I'm also taking out from the library. Um, so reading, but then we're also going to throw in some fun things. Like we might do some art that's based on something in that continent or um, try some of their food, either cooking it or going out to a restaurant, um, maybe listen to some music. So um, we have some fun, some fun things coming up for that. And I'm excited. Um, we're also learning a little bit about space because both of my kids have always loved looking up at the moon and the sky. I don't know if that's just all kids or just mine, um, but they do. And my husband enjoys it as well. Um, so again, mostly books. Um, this is the one we're going to start with the moon book by Gail Gibbons. This isn't for my Charlotte Mason lovers. This isn't necessarily what I would call a living book. Um, and I was trying to get more of those with this topic. It's a little harder to get younger living books. Um, 
but you know I've, I've already had this one and they enjoyed it and um, I have some more like the stories um, the mythological stories um, uh, about the constellations and things like that so and full moon lore stories um, I think um, I think they're mostly Native American stories from different tribes so things like that for space Sorry, I'm looking at my list of things to tell you. Oh, um, artist and composer. So I've been actually doing this for, I want to say even a year and a half already, where I pick a composer and an artist, Charlotte Mason style. Um, but we don't do narration or anything like that. But we do pick, um, we read usually some picture books about that artist and that composer. And then we just listen to one of their pieces or look at one of their artwork, um, a piece of artwork. So we're doing Van Gogh and Beethoven at the start of this year. Um, Van Gogh is one of my favorites, so I'm, I'm excited about that. I had forgotten to grab the books for this that I wanted to show you, so I found some excellent ones for Van Gogh that I'm pretty excited about. This is Van Gogh and the Sunflowers, and this one is Katie and the Starry Night, and they're both about Van Gogh. Um, what's a picture book? What? And it has... Um, you know, some of his paintings in that one. So, um, yes, I'm excited to read those to the kids. And I already have a list of the pictures we're going to look at, the paintings. And um, I've actually printed out copies of them for us to look at. Uh, so that is our artist and composer. Um, oh, music. Yes. We um, have, is it a subscription? I don't I don't know what it is. We have a membership, I think, at Preschool Prodigies. And um, if you are a music fan with young kids, I recommend it. So this is one of the few things we actually use screens for um, in our homeschool with our young kids. Um, and um, it's it's videos teaching kids about pitch and rhythm. And um, it's, again, it's aimed towards preschoolers. And they use um, either bells or boom whackers. They're mostly bells, the colored bells. That you can get and they sell ones that you just um instead of having to pick up and ring you can just hit the top of and so um i have a set of each of the, you know the pick up and ring and the ones you can hit and so i take them both out for the kids um and the videos are pretty short i think they're like average of five minutes my kids really enjoy it um especially actually my son so i'm hoping to do you know one or two videos of that a day what else lots more extras that are just um you know, people do on a normal basis and wouldn't consider school, but because we're a homeschooling family, I consider it school. So uh, nature is a big one for us. Getting outside every day, um, once a week I try to plan more, um, uh, you know, of a hike, something where we leave. Um, we have this beautiful pond near us, this lake, that small lake pond that we walk around so we can do that on a daily basis. Um, but to go out on a hike somewhere else or and we do, they do have nature journals. Um, they, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so what I do is this is my daughter's nature journal. Um, and this year I got one for my son as well. So, um, yes. So I bring the nature journals. Honestly, they don't usually write in them much because they're not writers yet. But what I bring is some clipboards and some paper. And this year I was smart. I cut the paper down smaller so that... See, when you put the big paper in, it's bigger than the notebook, and it really bothers me <laughs> more so than the kids. Um, but this will be able to glue or tape in without going outside the notebook and getting all ruined. So we bring this, and often they'll draw, and I'll maybe take some notes or draw, or pick some flowers and press them inside my book. Um, actually, my daughter really enjoys doing that too. So um, we'll do that in on our like longer nature days. Um, we also do art, um, so painting and clay and crafts and handwork. A lot of the crafts are more so on the Waldorfy side. So um, I did get some um, uh, some of the kite paper for making the paper um, stars in the windows this year. I think she's going to need a lot of help doing that, but I think she'll enjoy it. Um, I also you might be able to see behind me, maybe not. I painted some peg dolls and I got some to give to her um, with the making peg doll books. Again, I think she's young for it. She's gonna need a lot of help, but she's seen other people's peg dolls and we've even watched a couple YouTube videos together of people making them and she loves the idea. So um, I got some for her and I'm hoping we can do 
some of that. Um, we're also, um, I have done baking and cooking stuff with the kids before, but I have not been consistent. So one of my goals is to be more consistent in the baking and cooking. So hopefully once a week we will be doing, so baking, um, mainly baking bread, but also some treats, especially during the fall. I mean, come on, apple cider donuts, although we do baked donuts, not fried, cause I'm not playing with the, with the oil with the little kids. Um, and what else? Well, pumpkin bread, anything pumpkin, really, apple crisp, things like that in the fall. But also things like making butter, making jam. So it doesn't necessarily have to be baking. That's why I say baking and cooking. Um, home cleaning tasks, chores, helping out in the garden. Then there's things like celebrating the seasons and the holidays. Um, I like to get books related to the holidays. And sometimes we do activities and crafts. Uh, we also have a family read aloud going on at all times that we do before we start bedtime routine. Right now we're reading Ember Falls. Um, we already did the Green Ember earlier this year. Um, we've also done a, a few of the little house books and I'm hoping to do um, continue that this year. They both really like, um, like those books. Um, and then last but not least, um, we are starting a play group at our congregation. Um, we go to a UU congregation and it's for um, kids third grade and under and their caretakers so it could be parents it could be a nanny um you know maybe grandma's grandma watches the kids during the week um so we'll be starting that and there should be there's some other homeschoolers that expressed interest um but um this is a good thing for helping with responses to socialization questions it's a good time to practice our social skills Honestly, I feel like my children are fine with their social skills. We interact with other people regularly and um, I haven't had any problems. Um, this is actually something I started more for me um, that I need more social interaction and support and I like to help support others as well. So um, we'll be doing that. Okay, quick pause. I had to get some tea as you, my voice is kind of already going. Um, Okay, so that's, I mean, it sounds like a lot. I'm excited. It's, I think it sounds like a lot because school is, is a lifestyle. And so again, there's stuff that people might do after their kids get home from preschool that they're not considering school, but I do. And um, a lot of the extras are just fun. It's fun life stuff. Um, I'm really excited to get started. So if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button below. It's red, so you should be able to find it easily. And until next